God. Thank you for your great love. The text said you have loved us with an everlasting love, with cords of compassion, and you've drawn us unto yourself. The text said no greater love than a man to lay down his life for his friend. The text said you have demonstrated the love for us that while we were sinners, you died that we might live. The text said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Thank you for your love. And you have decreed that we should love like you love. For the text says, love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciple if you love one another. Help us, O oh God, to love us, to love each other as you have loved us. All the glory, all the honor, and all the praise for yours forever. Jesus' name. Amen. Book of Hebrews, chapter 14. Beginning at verse 6. Therefore, say, unto the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God, repent and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away your faces from all your abominations. For every one of the house of Israel for the stranger that sojourneth in Israel which separateth himself from me and set up his idols in his heart and put the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me. I, the Lord, will answer him by myself and I will set my face against that man and will make him a sign and a proverb and I will cut him off from the midst of my people and you shall know that I am the Lord. And the prophet, and if the prophet be deceived, when he hath spoken the thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. And I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people, Israel. And they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity, the punishment of a prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him, that the house of Israel may go no more astray from me, neither be polluted any more with all their transgressions, but, they, but that they may be my people, and I may be their God, saith the Lord God. Amen. Man. Respect to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Respect to the office of this church, to the choir and the musicians. God is good. And God is worthy to be praised. Amen. Respect to my wife and my son and my daughter. The book of Ezekiel. If you had a thought for your mind today, when Jesus ain't enough, when Jesus ain't 
enough. Not everybody loves the Lord. Is that right? Some people love the devil. Some people love money. Some people love dope. People love all different kinds of things. But make no mistake about it. You might be able to fool yourself. You might be able to fool somebody else. But you can't never fool God. Is that right? And what God desires is our total allegiance. God don't take second place to nothing and God don't take second place to nobody. In this text, we have one of God's prophets by the name of Ezekiel. Ezekiel was a bold servant of God. God told him whatever that he, whatever message that he was given, that he needed to speak it. Don't add nothing to it and don't take nothing from it. And do know, God has not changed for the party. He still expects the same thing out of his servants. That we would declare, thus saith the Lord. Is that right? For there is no other way of salvation but by the word of God. For the scripture says, receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. But for some people, Jesus ain't enough. Israel, amen, was backsliding away from the Lord. But God was continued, Brother Johnson, to send their preachers, prophets, teachers, to declare unto them what was God's heart and what was God's mind for the people of the time. And in this text, the scripture said some elders, amen, these were supposed to be some people that was in charge. They came unto the preacher. Amen. And when they came to the preacher, uh, the preacher didn't have time to speak because the, God spoke to the preacher. That kind of preacher you need to be listening to, one that God is speaking to. Everybody that told the Bible ain't no Christian. Everybody that called themselves a preacher ain't preaching in the name of Jesus Christ. Some folk are double angels. They're working for the devil. Amen. They'll tell you whatever your little ears want to hear. But somebody, amen, that's trying to uphold the Lord see that God, amen, is speaking while the people is sitting for before the preacher, Brother Carly, God has got the preachers here. He says to them, uh, to the preacher, he said, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? God is asking the preacher, look here, preacher, these folk don't love me. They got all kind of other gods that they're worshiping, but they come to the church anyhow, and they're looking for a word from the Lord. But, the, but God tells the preacher, should I listen to them? Uh, when I know they're double-timing me, when I know they're cheating on me, when I know they're committing spiritual adultery, should I listen to them? Did y'all read that for yourself? That's what the text says. And so what God did, he said, I'm going to give you a word. Verse 4, Thus said the Lord God, every man of the house of Israel that set up idols. Y'all know what idols is, right? That's anything that you put before the Lord. Do y'all know that worship can be an idol? When you come to church for a church service, but you're not coming to church for Christ, 
Do y'all know that the music that the choir sing can be an idol? When you come in so they can, they can sing your favorite song, but you're not praying in the name of the Lord. Do y'all know that preachers can be an idol? You get the one that you want, they say whatever you want to say, amen, but you put them before the Lord. Do you know that this building can become an idol? That you love these seats, that you love these bricks and these walls more than the God who built the church. Do y'all know that the Bible can be an idol? When you don't want nobody to tell you, you got that pretty cover on it, but you don't ever read it for yourself. Do y'all know that Sunday morning can be an idol? When you don't get up and say, thank you, Jesus, but you don't do whatever you want. God said, say unto the people, read, tell them, anybody that loves anything or anybody more than they love me. Hmm? Go ahead and take the teaching. Say unto them that anybody in there that loves anything or anybody more than they love me. This is what I want you to tell them. They need to take away the strange gods out of their heart. They need to take away the strange gods out of from before me. So what I'm gonna tell you, brother preacher, you ain't you ain't got to figure out what you're gonna say to them because I'm gonna speak to them. Myself. Now, I want you to understand when God is saying this now, what He has already said. Sister Blue, He already said, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. He already said, Don't make unto thee any graven image. He, he already said, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to me. He already said that. He said, I, the Lord, am a Jealous God and visiting the iniquity on them that hate me to the third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth, and seventh generation. He already have said that. And, and so, in this time of the Christmas season where we have made an idol out of Christmas, we done put Christmas before Christ. We, we got to a place now, we keep the tree up all year, we keep the Christmas lights up. Oh yeah, we want to. We want them thing to put us in the mind of Christmas. But when you don't got that kind of mind, you don't put Christmas before Christ. There ain't no salvation in Christmas. There ain't no salvation in a tree. And all those things are fine in their place. But when you begin to put those things before God, and when you begin to try to compete with others about who got the most junk and who got the prettiest junk, Amen. You don't put that stuff before God because ain't no salvation in no Christmas. Christmas life, other than the light that came down from heaven. Anybody know about that? Like he said, I am the light of the world. He that follow me shall not walk in darkness. I'm talking about that light. And that light gave light unto us. The thing that what the Bible said, he said, you are the light of the world. A city that is sitting on the hill cannot be here. God don't want for the traffic to you because of your Christmas life. God won't for the traffic to you because we got the light of Christ. Inside of you. When Jesus ain't enough, Christmas doesn't got to be a place where people are gonna name their thing that it takes to satisfy them. And our kids have got to the place that if they don't get what they want. They got the nerve to think you done did them wrong. When you already putting, putting food on the table. When you already putting clothes on the back. When you making sure there's a roof over their heads. And they're going to look down on you because you didn't get what they wanted for Christmas. And I, and I can testify. I used to be that kind of a devil. That I had to have a certain thing on Christmas Day. The, the reason why I was like that, amen, brother Kenny, because I was ignorant. 
Amen. But when you know better, maybe you ought to do better. And, and, and now, if I just wake up on Christmas morning, I can raise my hand and say, Lord, I thank you. If nobody buy me no gift, I had a gift when I opened my two eyes. I had a gift when I put my leg over the side of the bed. I had a gift when I could open my lips and say, Lord, just thank you for one more day. See, my Christmas is different than what it used to be. Folks used to have to try to please me. But now, I'm trying to please the Lord. I'm trying to let him know, Lord, ain't nobody that can do me like you can. Ain't no joke that anybody got me that can give me joy like you can. Because in your presence, in the fullness, in your presence, in the fullness of joy, I, I need to go back and, and talk about it. When God said he's going to answer the people, uh, go back, go to verse number seven. For every one of the house of Israel or the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separated, y'all remember what the Bible said? He separated himself from me. You ever had a child that you were walking with and they call you, call themselves mad at you and they gonna, you gonna reach for them, they gonna snatch their back, huh? Ain't that embarrassing when they do that in front of somebody and you the one that took care of them, you the one that brought them in the world and they gonna call themselves to embarrass you in public. God is saying everybody that called themselves separated themselves from me. Can, can, can we be honest? How many people really trying to separate themselves from God today. Some folks want to be known by how much money they got. Some folks want to be known by how much stuff they got. Some folks want to be known as transgender. They done changed the gender from he and she to whatever they want to call it. But when you do that, what you're saying is that God lied when everything he made was what good and what very good. When you're going to name it something different than what God named it, then now you separated yourself from the Lord. We need to put your money before God. And we'll tell the church, church, I would give the money, but uh, that's too much money to give. I don't work too hard for this. But can I ask you a question? When you die, what's your money going to do for you? When you die, what's your house going to do for you? When you die, what's your job? All these things that they put before the Lord, what is going to do for you? God said it. God said to everybody that separate themselves from me and set it up in the idol in his heart and put up the stumbling block of the iniquity. Y'all hear what he said? Now Jesus said, now look unto who? Look unto who? Look unto what? Me. But the book said, but these folk that's living today, they look at everywhere but to Jesus. Some folk look into the stock market. They, they trying to see it in what their stock's going to do today. Some folk look into the sale paper that they like to find stuff on sale. And look, it's okay to buy stuff that you need. But can I, can I, can I tell you what people say? He said, give us this day our daily bread. Some of us are not trying to buy what we need. We're trying to buy excess. We're trying to be more than what we're supposed to be. Amen. We're trying to make a way so we don't never suffer. Can I tell you what God can do? God can take away everything you got and give it to somebody else. When you make your money your God, God can give that money to somebody else. When you make your house, your God. God can give that house to somebody else. When you make your job, your God, God can have that job to lay you off and find somebody less qualified and put it in that position. Why? Because you put it before him. God said, God said now, preacher, that when he comes in, pastor, what's, what's the word from the Lord? We don't just tell them that I'm gonna answer them. I'm gonna answer that question myself. Y'all see what his answer is? Look at verse number eight. Some some folk in the church they be catching hell, but they see and they be trying to wonder why I go through so much hell. Sometimes because you don't took your eyes off hell. Y'all hear what I say? You done took your eyes off 
<laughs> Don't look at your marriage more than you look to God. Don't look at your children more than you. Some of us have made idols out of our children. They can't do nothing wrong. They can't help somebody. They can't do nothing wrong. And even when they're wrong, they don't do nothing wrong. Now everybody, the said all have what sin and cut short of the glory of death of God. And sometimes the reason why we fed in here, son, because the text said we not took our eyes off of God. We look at the what we want to go. We look at the what we want to do more than we look to God. Some folks get mad looking for that food. They're looking for that baby. They get that baby and they, they go down the aisle and they say, I do. And soon as they get mad, look like they run off with somebody else. And sometimes the reason that happens because we trying to put the value before God. We think our spouse, we think, we think our spouse is God. We want to worship them as God. But ain't nobody God but God. There is no God that can sit high and look low and watch over your knees but the Lord. The devil got some power, but the devil ain't got all power. Money got some power in this world because of the fools who put their love in it. But the money, there's some stuff your money cannot do. Your money can't heal your body. Your money can't frame your one of a child at home. Your money can't keep your marriage together. Your money can't keep you in the glory. There's some stuff your idol. And have them to destroy 
people on earth. You read the rest of this chapter. God said, I did that. And some folks say, well, God, he, he too kind to do that. That was going to somebody. Well, there's a reason there's a hell. Because everybody don't want to go to hell. And, heaven, and hell ain't no, ain't no vacation. Hello, somebody. Look, the, the, the Bible teaches now, it's a bad thing when you fall into the hands of an angry God. Now, the Bible say he's slow to get angry. But when he get angry, hello, somebody, can, can somebody... Amen. Chapter 5, what the book said about Sodom and Gomorrah, when he sent a word to the people, and the people didn't want the word, what happened? He sent down fire and brimstone. And so now, if you want to go to fire and Sodom and Gomorrah, you're not going to be able to join it. Because God made it like it was never was. And Lord have mercy. If you keep putting anything before God, the text said, he'll make you like you never was. Because people in heaven won't remember your name. People in heaven won't remember your birthday. People in heaven won't remember your favorite color. You know why? Because you don't get up to us. Hell, why don't we? Talk about when Jesus is not enough. Then you go back to the Garden of Eden when the devil made Eve think that Jesus was not enough. Jesus gave Adam and Eve the whole world. But the devil said, What? Look, there's one thing God is holding out on you. That tree, if you eat of that tree, God knows that you're going to be just like God, going good and evil. But that devil was lying. That was somebody. He didn't tell them the whole truth. What was the whole truth? God had already declared the day you eat of that tree, you shall surely die. Anybody glad? There's a difference between right and wrong. There's a difference between good and evil. There's a difference between heaven and hell. And you want to know what his name is? His name is Jesus. He is the difference between heaven and hell. He is the difference between right and wrong. Now the Bible says there's no unrighteousness in our God. He's too wise. To make a mistake. He took time to do you wrong. When Jesus is not enough, but Lord have mercy for that boy who realized that was a rich one living in the world of sin. When they look at the when they look up there on that cross, when they see him hanging high, when they see him stretching wide, when they cry out, Lord have mercy, I'm a sinner. When that boy really look at him, that he's got all by himself. He realizes, ain't nobody do me like Jesus. Ain't nobody do me like the Lord. When that one really go to Calvary and they go hungry, he decides that he's a God that will feed them. What the Bible said, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, the book said, they shall be healed. Anybody hungry and thirst after righteousness, the book said, they shall be healed. Beyond your father. 
and see your needs. So many people we call friends. <laughs> They'll talk to you good on the phone. And then they got another friend who ain't friend with you. They'll get off that phone with you and go talk about you to the other friend. But my Jesus, my Jesus, my Jesus won't do that today. If I tell him my secret, ain't got to run out of it. Where about who he gonna tell it to? He'll keep it to himself. If I tell him my weakness, he won't manipulate me and try to use it against me. When you tell some of these folks your weakness, Lord, what happens? It's gonna be all over the news for six o'clock news. Come on. If you tell them your weakness, they're gonna manipulate you. But let Jesus know your weakness. He'll give you some strength. He'll give you grace to run your race. I don't know about you, but Jesus is enough for me. He's enough for me. He's enough in the morning. He's enough in the next day. He's enough for the night. Huh? I don't need a sweet baby. I got a sweet baby. He's sitting on the throne. The Bible says he walked it over me. The Bible says he walked it out. I don't have to get drunk to forget my past. I got the Spirit of God in me. He said, forget those things that are behind the street for the things that are going to press for them all. I don't have to get high. I get high of a Christ. I'm high of Jesus, he said. He's enough for me. He, he didn't use to be. Well, I didn't know about the party, but since he found me, and since I found him, I know my wife sitting there, but I don't need nobody but you. I would cry if she left me, but I know she's a hit me for a long. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? I don't need nobody but Jesus. My daddy gone. My heavenly father still with me, Mercedes. He, he still speaks to me. My heavenly father. He still makes sure my needs are met, Mercedes. My heavenly father. He's still, he still looking out for me. He's still looking out for me, my heavenly father. Daddy did what he can do in his time. But my heavenly father took up the slack. But David said, well, my mother and father the same thing. The law. Take me up. You hear me, Daddy? My brother gone, Sister Dennis. Your son gone, Sister Dennis. But she will be your brother. He'll, he'll be your son. He'll be your mother. He'll be your water in a dry place. He'll be your food when you're hungry. He'll be whatever you need him to be. The book said, all you got to do is what? Ask. And then begin to seek in your time. Knock in the door, show me open. That's what the text says. We too big to knock on other folks, though. We too big to call on other folks. You need to call on the Lord. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. I know you love your wife. I know you love your children. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. God is trying to remind this church. What life is all about. It ain't about the junk in your life. It ain't about the fake folk in your life. Even sometimes your own family is fake. Sometimes your own family can't stay. You be, if you be honest and tell the truth. But God, His love is here. His love is righteous. His love is holy. His love is eternal. And when you find yourself by yourself, just today, you'll never walk alone. For you said, Lord, I'll be with you always, even to the end. There's been a lot of death and sickness. We went to Sister Catherine's mother's funeral. Friday, my family buried my little young second cousin, 
yesterday. And his mother, her husband dead, her mom and dad dead, her son dead. And my, my little second cousin, Daddy, who's my first cousin, which used to be a, a friend, he died 23 years ago. So it looked like her life is full of, of death. But yesterday at the funeral, she stood by the casket. And she welcomed everybody who came to the casket. Huh? Talk about strength. Talk about realizing where your health comes from. And she sat there and pat on the back. Everybody that came to Now talk about the mother of the one that was in the casket. She stood there and patted everybody on the back because they viewed her son. You talk about some strength. That strength can only come from the Lord. I'm going to tell you what happened. After the last person came through, then she let go. She let out that pain that was on the inside. But I'm just see first, the first thing she did was serve everybody who wanted to come and knew her son. She served them. She stood up there and hugged them and, and let them take their time. And after everybody was served, then she wept. Then she cried and cried out to God. Uh, she couldn't bring her baby back. She couldn't bring her husband back. She couldn't bring mom and daddy back. But she can trust God to keep her. Who you depending on? This is your job. You put your job before God. Them folks can lay you off. Some of them are sorry. Y'all hear about it? the company up there in Grand Bakersfield? The night before Thanksgiving, they sent them a text. 2,700 people said you fired. The, the night before Thanksgiving, they sent them a text saying you fired. That's the only numbers they got. You can't depend on nobody but God. Huh? Be careful making your wife or your husband God. Some folks can come home and find somebody else in their bed. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Don't put nobody before the Lord. Don't put you before the Lord. Your mama, your daddy, your dog, your cat, your son, your brother, your son, your daughter. Don't put nobody before the Lord. They will fail you. Your hobbies will fail you. Your habits will fail you. Your mama will fail you. Your daddy will fail you. But God will never fail you. Christmas will fail you. Maybe nobody will buy you nothing. Maybe somebody's going to buy you something you can't stand. But that little baby in that manger, he built to be that man that took your cross. He will never fail you. Jesus is enough. Matter of fact, if you got Jesus and something else, this text is talking to you. God don't play second. He wants all of you. Is that right? What Jesus said, love with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. Are you saved? Are you dedicated to the Lord? That's what this text is talking about. These was religious folk. Huh? These was religious folk. Matter of fact, the Bible said they were elders, which means they had high position in the church. But the Bible said they had idols in their heart.
take back to a play period. Ain't no play period. Every day you wake up, God want to be first in your heart, first in your mind, first in your mind. You got hell in you? If you got hell in you, you need to get that junk out of there. Only way you're going to get that junk out of there, you got to give it to Jesus. You got hope you can't have, you hate, you can't stand them. You got to get that hell out of you. You can't go into heaven with hell in you. That ain't how it works. You got to turn from your sin. Ain't no one that says, repent. Repent me the time and go in a different direction. You got another God you put before him. You can't get to heaven with that God. But I tell you what you do. You keep that God. Y'all go to hell together. But that's exactly what's going to happen. Until you turn from everything that you put in front of God. The text says you ain't going to have no peace in your life. You ain't going to have no peace in your home. You're not going to have no peace in your parents. When God say, I will speak to them, he's going to speak through trials and troubles. He's going to speak through tribulations. Why so many people sick and dying? Can I ask you a question? How many people do you really know that's serious about God? Talk to me. I'm talking about even, even in your own family. I'm talking about serious about God. They got a mind to do whatever God said. How many people do you know that's really serious about God? I ain't talking about members of no church. There's a lot of members on the way to hell because they're not made Jesus their choice. How many, ask me, ask me. How many people you know that's serious about God that you can read that Bible and see them trying to live? If you can't name too many people, why do you think the earth is kept in hell? God ain't happy. God not satisfied. And here's what pleases it more. It's when people come to the church, hear the word that he has to give, and they leave and do the same thing. The same thing they did before they come. Not trying to love nobody. Not trying to help nobody. Not trying to serve nobody. Still gossiping, still lying, still sleeping around, still getting drunk, still getting high, still stealing. That's what grieves him. And then have an answer, I'm not of the so and so church. That, that grieves the spirit of God. It grieves the spirit. Let me ask you a question. Your husband come in your house. Talk about I need some love. And you know for certain, he just left some other woman. What you gonna say? Just talk to me. What you gonna say? What you gonna tell him? You know he cheating on you. What you gonna say? You ain't got the answer. You ain't got the answer. You know that's gonna get on your last day. And you're probably going to say some stuff that you shouldn't repeat in church. Did you hear what I said? You're probably going to say some stuff that you can't repeat in church. If you know he cheating on you and coming to you talking about he wants to love it, you're going to tell him something. Big mama will say you'll let him know what you're tired of. What do you think God is doing? Look at these empty pews. You think God is happy with empty pews in church? Huh? How many people have you offered Christ to? How many people have you witnessed to since last week? How many people you have to turn from their sin unto Jesus Christ? Are you talking to your son and daughter about being faithful to God? This ain't nothing but the truth. The, the Lord told you to say the truth is the lie. The truth will set you free. God is not pleased. We going to the ball game more than we. Y'all hear me? We serve the ball game more than we serve the church. Huh? We go bless the casino before we come and bless the church. Give the casino everything we got. Tell the church ain't got nothing to give y'all. This is what we're doing, and we think God is pleased. He's not pleased, and He's not deceived. That's why everybody getting whooping. 
Some of you ever come out there, right? One person messed up, guess what? Everybody's suffering for it. He ain't changed. The text said he the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I know this ain't no what they call Christmas message. This is the one he gave me. Because I'm supposed to warn you, right? Because remember, you ain't going to be able to testify to me when I stand before him. My work's going to testify. And what I'm going to have to give account of is that I do what he told me to do. I love you enough to tell you that you need to behave before. Because God will show you, God will prove to you that I love you. If I if I if I ever tell you the truth, God will prove my love to you. I don't need no phone amens. I don't need no fake pet on the back. Jesus did that when he woke me up this morning. Huh? Jesus did that when he woke me up this morning. If you ain't living right, this is time to get right. This is, you about to get left. If you ain't living right, this is time to get right because you're about to get left. Huh? Now but the righteous shall see. Shall see God. And righteous don't mean member of the church. Righteous mean living right. He said, men shall come to the last day, saying, Lord, Lord, and shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Why? They didn't do what God told them to do. They did their religion. They came to church. They might have had a position. But they weren't doing nothing but to the glory of God. They were doing it for their own honor. 